As Michael says, I'm Sarah Higgins. I'm from the Department of Information Studies at Aberystwyth University. And this is a short paper, so I'm presenting work in progress, which is being undertaken um, as part of my research portfolio at the university. So, Tuvy Dovey. Tuvy is Welsh for grow. Tuvy, grow, Dovey, Dovey is a part of Wales, which I'll talk about. Food, nature and well-being is funded by the Welsh Government Rural Communities Development Programme. It is a partnership between Eco Dovey, which is an NGO which covers quite a lot of work around the Dovey biosphere, Aberystwyth University, Garden Organics, Mach Mythlon, the Centre for Alternative Technology, Aberystwyth Foods for Surplus and Penparky Community Council. So it's very much rooted in the community rather than the, um, the uh, research community. So the UNESCO Dovey Biosphere is where this work is situated. The 669 uh, UNESCO reserves worldwide, six of these are in the UK. It was designated in 2009. And the Dovey Biosphere covers a bilingual community of around 26,000 people. And its main goals are to be recognised and respected internationally for the diversity of natural beauty, heritage and wildlife, but also for the people who live there and their contribution and their ability to make a more sustainable world. So we've got some very high goals in the Dovey biosphere. We're looking at being more self-reliant, less carbon intensive and basing things on local culture, local resources, local products and environmental assets. So we're very much trying to work sustainably within a local environment. So that's the main towns that it covers. Uh, Aberystwyth, you'll see, is down at the, in the, the corner there. Mahuncliffe is very much in the centre. The, the biosphere has actually extended a little bit since this uh, graphic was created, so it also includes a town called Town, which is around here. So what does it look like? the Biosphere Reserve. This is what it looks like. It's very rural, it's very small. This is Aberystwyth. This is actually a view from my office. It's really nice working at Aberystwyth University. Uh, 12,000 people living in Aberystwyth and 12,000 students, 24,000 people altogether. This is Mahuncliffe, a town of 2,500 people. Um, and just in case you're feeling jealous, these were all taken within five minutes walk from my house. So I'm very fortunate to live right in the very centre of this and be working with my local community. So what is agroecology? It's a holistic and integrated approach to agriculture, looking at ecological and social concepts and principles. It's the direct opposite of big agriculture. It is the direct opposite of large farms, small farms, local food production, thinking about social, cultural, technological, ecological, political dimensions and understanding how farming actually works to create a local community and to feed a local community. So what Tavi Dovey is aiming to do is to provide a, na a national exemplar of how multiple organisations could cooperate in local food systems. It is doing a large number of different activities around this. It's supporting and training people to grow and cook food. It's investigating the potential for community-led agriculture initiatives. We're doing field-scale trials of crops because, crucially, crop growing ended in the Dovey biosphere with EU um, money, which encouraged people just to grow sheep. So we're looking at reintegrating crop growing into the local area and how we can develop local markets. So how does this fit together with digital preservation? How does this fit with information systems? I can see you all thinking this is very nice, but this is not an ecology conference. Local food security systems have very, very short supply chains. And because they have very short supply chains, they need very, very good information systems. They need robust modelling of how the data that is required actually moves around the people that need the data. They need an architecture that thinks about the data life cycle. They need an architecture which actually thinks about how the data is created, how it's spread to the right people, how it's accessed, how it's kept over the long term, so that that can inform future farming initiatives. There is a lot of work in this area for big farming. 
but this doesn't scale down. There's hardly any work in this area for agroecology and for small farming. And what small-scale farmers tend to do is to rely on interpersonal relationships. They chat to each other, they find out what's going on. That information is not captured. The traditional knowledge is not um, is not captured. The informal networks are very fragile. Somebody moves on and the information is lost. So my role in the project oops, is to think about that information and understand the information needs and, go, and understand how that information needs to be curated and kept over the long term so that it can inform future developments. So we're basing a lot of the work on a form project. We've started from a form project, Mixed Farming Histories and Futures. And it created a GIS portal, which brought together a lot of existing mapping and then archival sources to understand what used to be grown in the valley before the EU subsidy system kind of decimated crop growing. And we also collected oral histories from older farmers to find out what they were growing when they were young farmers, find out what knowledge had already been lost. And we also identified who all the key enterprises were that were already producing and distributing fresh local produce. And we discovered that they were very diverse and they weren't really talking to each other. So there we can see in the 1840s there was a lot of arable land just around here. This is where the pictures I showed you earlier were. And by the um, contemporary times, there's absolutely no arable. Brown is the arable. It's all just woodland and pasture. So we're able to identify that actually we could grow crops in this area. And now we can start to negotiate with the people who own the land around maybe reintroducing crop growing. And we also identified that in the past, people had grown a large number of crops. And you can see here, these are the oral histories mapped showing where people mentioned carrots, turnips, barley and oats in their oral history. These were things that were being grown in living memory within the valley. And we did a marketing trial. The Open Food Network is an agroecological tool for marketing um, information. So we did a pilot as the Dovey Food Hub, and that brought together eight food producers. It's very small scale, this project. Eight food producers and eight buyers. And what we found was that there was a, a negative feedback because the producers wouldn't sell, because the distributors wouldn't buy, and the distributors wouldn't buy because there wasn't a range of produce. So that immediately tells us that there's an information gap there around what to grow, when to grow it, when to make it available, and who wants to buy it. So we're building on that, identifying those data gaps so that we can start to create, distribute, and look after that data over the long term. So we discovered that the producers need to know about where there's land that they could use, because land is quite tightly controlled in the Dovey Valley, controlled by the owners, how they could distribute that, what crops people wanted to have grown, what the prices were, what quantity that the producers actually were willing to buy, and then the distributors needed to know about the quantity of crops being produced. And we are looking at where those data interventions need to be and how we're going to share that data, curate that data, and analyse that data for the long term. As I said, it's a work in progress. So we're moving on to the next steps now. As soon as I get back, I'm going to start collecting data from a range of different stakeholders, the growers, both community and commercial, field-scale triers, farm clusters, where people have got together in clusters as a farm to decide to grow things together, the market gardeners, very small market gardens, other key vendors. And once I've done interviews with the key project participants, I will be rolling out questionnaires to the the larger participant base. We're starting with interviews, that's not normally how you would do social science, but we don't actually know what the questions to ask are beyond the data gaps that we've analysed. So if we talk to the key participants first, we can start to understand what questions we need more information about. This is, this is what it looks like, local agroecology, just to let you see the scale of that. This is a summer fair that we had uh, in the middle of August, 
people with their produce, people show, giving, doing cooking demonstrations and so on, just to get the ball rolling and get people on board with the project. And all the data needs that I identify are going to be benchmarked against the DCC curation lifecycle model so that analysis and that architecture design can be based very firmly around a framework where it can be curated and preserved over the long term. And hopefully this will um, inform the next stage of the project. We're not sure where we can get funding from that for. But one of the key aspirations is that we'll be able to set up a community food hub where all of the different growers, all of these different stakeholders that I identified in this slide, can actually start to collaborate in a much more integrated way and using the data mechanisms that we set up. So that's all I wanted to say, really. I don't, do we have questions now, Rachel? Uh, oh, what am I doing? Well, yes, let's start with round of Thank you. Yeah, we've got two or three minutes for any questions from the floor or online. Do you have a microphone? Sorry. I always need to come to the microphone. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hi, um, I'm Claire from the National Archives in the UK. Um, can you talk a bit about the um, data sets that you use to um, pull together the historical um, Information that okay, you so showed. we used um, Dudley Stamp's 1930s um, land use survey, and we used the tithe maps from that were digitised by the National Library of Wales, and they're accompanied by a, an apportionment schedule that tells you exactly what the land was being used for. And we worked with an organisation called um, called <laughs> sorry, <laughs> we worked with a GIS systems uh, organisation who helped us to map those against the modern land use maps that are, are created by Landsat and so on. So. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, just one question. Did I understand that correctly, that you use the DCC lifecycle model not only to model the data flow, but also the communication flow within the community? And do you see overlaps there? We will be using it. We haven't yet. This is a work in progress, remember. Um, once the interviews and the questionnaires are complete, we'll be benchmarking the data against the lifecycle model to ensure that we haven't left any gaps in provision I haven't thought about any aspect of long-term curation of the data. Thank you. Um, just a question. This is a very nice community where you've worked for, for this, this, this project. Do you think you can transfer this kind of project also to other communities? Yeah, it's interesting. We are in touch with other communities who are trying to do a similar thing. Uh, and we're, we're working with the Open Food Network a little bit about the metadata standard that they need to actually sell the, the inf to, to create their app and to sell the information. So there's, we're already linking two other communities, particularly one in Cambridge in the UK, where they've they've really got quite mature agroecological system going on. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Questions at the end, if, if all the other speakers uh, equally disagree. Uh, that was subtle, wasn't it? So, uh, thanks very much, Sarah. Um,